In this part, we're going to add even more bubbles and fix other minor issues. Let's go to the GR notes and look through the camera and fix this edge. Let's color it. Probably I need to move at this point. Okay. I'm going to select it. Uh-huh, this is better. And I'm going to select on this one here. Yeah, it looks right. Ooh, look at that. This is fun. Now let's tweak the bubbles. We need to turn on the preview. Just to see what is happening with our points without copying spheres on them every time. IGL sphere points equals one. Now we see them like this. The problem is that they're twice as big as the sphere after copying, so the sphere should be twice as big. Fixed. Now we can adjust attribute. Attribute adjust. P scale again. Multiply noise. Noise values, element size. And the minimum value should be 0 0.1, so it won't delete them at all. There's also a cool node called Remesh Bubbles. You can just skip these, copy the points, and wire the points with pscale attribute inside the mesh. Although they're looking at the p-scale as a diameter rather than the scale, so <laughs> it's not a correct representation as the sphere points. Okay. You can just multiply it by two. Like this. So the cool thing is that they shouldn't intersect even if we scale them a bit. Yeah, I see. As you can see, they sort of collide with each other as a soft bodies with almost no expense from our side. We can use this for now. Reverse it. And check the render. Oh my god. Doesn't look good. Too many bubbles. Okay. But in theory, for smaller bubbles, this can work. Where's our sphere points? Uh, we need probably less spheres, but bigger. We can probably just create a couple of big bubbles and animate them in Vellum later on. So just create a sphere. Change the primitive type to polygon. Add some frequency. Scale it down. Place it here. And create another one. Place it a bit lower. Let's look at the basic shape as a reference. Okay. Let's merge them together. 
let's use them as the group preference to delete the points that would be inside these two spheres. Points, keeping boundary regions, boo -boo -boo, bounding object, and we can peak those spheres a bit. So we will definitely capture those points that are too close to our big spheres and blast them away. Blast. Blast. So we have these small spheres and we have two big spheres. We can now merge the two. We can look at them. Reverse the big ones. So this is our interior bubbles. And check it out. Now this is much cleaner and better looking. Probably we would benefit from the tiny spheres somewhere around here. Let's add them. Let's clean this up first. Okay, so we can use the same uh, VDB, but just scatter not 200, but 2000 points. Mm, maybe even 4000 points. And then just select the ones that we need and delete the rest. like so. And the deep not selected. So now we have another stream with small particles that yet to have their own P scale. Okay, those are too big. And the base scale should be 0 0.0025 and can randomize it a bit. Maybe like this and call it a day. So now we have big spheres. medium spheres and small spheres. Let's just separate the tiny ones from this stream so we can just simulate the grains for the tiny ones and vellum balloons for the big ones or medium ones. Split by P scale and call P scale if P scale is less than 0 0.01. This is too big. I need to split the paint tab. Top to bottom. And I need a geometry spreadsheet here. So, P scale. The smallest one is 0 0.009, so 
That's after the splitting. So probably should use something around zero 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 two. Like this. Uh huh. That's more like it. Okay. So we merge these two. That's going to be our grain seam. I'm going to use these ones as the bubbles. Configure veil and balloons. Figure grains. Uncheck the particle size tab and it's going to inherit the P scale from the points. Then we have to merge the constraints for those two. The geometry. And on this constraints. Velo solver. Add a velo solver. Wire it up. Uncheck the gravity. We don't need the ground, we don't need anything. We need a collision collision source. And a collision source should be something like this. Now I don't want to drag this thing here because it will be messy. So I'm just gonna create the object merge. Drag here and this color these like this and call it merge base liquid. We should also uncheck assume uniform radius because our particles don't have a uniform radius. And probably add a pop force. Uh, with some noise to it. Smaller swirl size and a bit of a upward force. So they're gonna float upwards as the time goes by. And check it out. Boom. Looks pretty neat. Although what's happening here? Uh, not cool. <sighs> Looks like we need to erode it even more. So it won't intersect with our exterior collider tunes. So okay, something's happening. Probably too intense, but there we are. Okay. So now we have cranes and uh, velo balloon seam. We need to split them again. We can use the ease grains attribute to separate them. This is the one. At ease grain equals one. Then they are grains. Then we just can use the Do we have property points still? We can use this one. Let's drag it here. Reduce the frequency. Maybe not. And this one is good as is. 
So now it's all geo. If you was subdivided. Open sub David loop. Yeah, now this is better. And then we plug it here. And check it out. Mm. You need something here, here, and here. We also can increase the depth of field a fair amount. Uh, I've stopped from 5.6 to maybe 2. Note something. Maybe more focus distance, a bit farther away. Mm -hmm. Looks like we need to highlight, move this highlight, maybe, maybe. Oh. Hmm, maybe to a shader a bit. Background gradient. Maybe, maybe. Maybe it's too much. We also can tweak the gamma for the light to determine the width of the gradient. Maybe more contrast will look better. Like this. Nah. Hmm. So, the next thing that we can do is probably tweak the top part to look more realistically and maybe tweak some particle behavior so not all of them will float upwards. Mm -hmm.